Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. So now that we have our source computers configured and our collector computer configured, we can create an event subscription. I'm just going to go to the start menu, launch our event viewer. And an event subscription is just what tells the collector computer and the source computers what events to forward and also how to forward them. Are they going to be collector initiated or source computer initiated? So I'm just going to highlight subscriptions, right click on it, click create subscription. And up here we'll give it a subscription name. Normally we want this to be pretty descriptive. I'll type in my app issues and down here we can give it a more detailed description if we'd like. In the destination log section, we select what log we want the forwarded events to be put in. And by default, there's a forwarded events event log that it puts the forwarded events in. And normally, this is going to be the right one to put it in. But we can actually put the forwarded events into any event log we like. So we would just select it here. I'm just going to leave it at forwarded events. Next, we're going to want to select a subscription type. Is it going to be collector initiated or source computer initiated? And again, the collector initiated means that the collector is going to go out and grab the specified events from our source computers. If we do source computer initiated, that means the source computers are going to send these specified events to the collector. Now with collector initiated, we're going to select certain computers. With source computer initiated, we're going to select computer groups. So we would need to create a group in Active Directory and add the computer accounts to that group and then select the appropriate computer group here. Another difference with source computer initiated is that source computers in the selected groups must be configured through policy or local configuration to contact this computer and receive the subscription. And we can do this through group policy and active directory or our local group policy object. So let's take a look at where to do that. I'm just going to type in gpedit.msc. Just expand it out. And we're going to be looking in the computer configuration section under administrative templates, under Windows components, and I'll select event forwarding. Notice there are two settings here, forward resource usage and also configure the server address refresh interval and a few other options. This is the one we want. I'll just right click on it, click on edit. Let's expand it out. We want to enable it and down here we see exactly how to configure it. We've got the syntax, option equals value, followed by a comma if we have more options, equals value. And this setting here, the server is mandatory. This is the address of the computer to which events should be forwarded. So this is going to be your collector. And if we're using the default HTTP and default port 5985, then we can just specify the fully qualified domain name of our collector. If not, and we'll see where to configure the port and the, the transport later on, uh, if we're using, let's say, HTTPS or a, a custom port number, then we're going to need to specify the fully qualified domain name or the HTTP, or the fully qualified URL, actually, the HTTPS colon backslash backslash fully qualified domain name of the collector colon the port number and then the rest of the URL. So I'm going to click on show to configure this. I'm going to type in server equals, and I'm going to be using just HTTP and the default port number. So all I need to do is specify the fully qualified domain name of our collector and that's going to be desktop 101.itdvds.local. Click OK. Click OK again and that's it. Now our source computers are configured and again we only need to do this if we're going to be using the source computer initiated and we would actually have to do that on all of our source computers. So if you've got a lot of them, you can see why you'd probably want to use group policy and active directory. In this example, though, we're going to do a collector-initiated subscription. So I'm going to go ahead and select computers. I'm going to add domain computers. The first one we're going to add is ITDVDs backslash desktop 101. Click OK. And I'm going to highlight it and click test just to make sure it's configured correctly. And it succeeded. Let's add another one. The ITDVDs backslash desktop 102. Go ahead and check the names. Click OK. I'm going to highlight that one also and click test. And the connectivity succeeded. Click OK. So I've got all my 
source computer selected here. Now down here we're going to specify the events we want to collect. So I'll click select events and here we can filter by time and this is just a filter like we set up before. So we can do any time, last hour, last 12 hours or even select a custom range if we'd like. I'm going to do let's say the last 30 days and I want critical warning and error. If we wanted information also we could check that box and we can filter by log we can do application log or application system or you know any log we choose. I'm going to do application and system so I want both of those logs. We can specify particular event sources here if we'd like. I'm going to go ahead and do all the event sources. If we were looking for just a particular application and that application had a specific event source maybe we would just want to check that event source. I'm going to go ahead and throw them all into this uh, forwarded event log and down here we could specify specific event IDs if that's what we were looking for. Also if events were generated by specific users or specific computers. So I'll go ahead and click OK. We've got a few advanced options here. I'll click on the advanced button. Remember when we added the collector's computer account to the event log readers group on our source computers this was because so that that computer account would have permission to read the event logs. If we didn't want to do that and we wanted to use, let's say, a user account, we could just specify a user here and specify the password for that user, and then it wouldn't use the machine account. Down here under Event Delivery Optimization, Normal. This is normally going to work for us if all of our computers are on a local area network and we don't have a lot of computers, like thousands of computers we're configuring event forwarding for. If we had a lot of computers or our event forwarding was happening over a WAN link, let's say the source computers were in one location and the collector was in another location, we might want to minimize bandwidth. And with normal, the event collection is going to happen every 15 minutes. When we select minimize bandwidth, it's going to happen every six hours. Another option is to minimize latency. This is if we need to get receive the events much faster. So we need more of a real-time event collection. We would select minimize latency. Down here we select the protocol HTTP or HTTPS. Now HTTP might sound a little scary at first because normally that's not encrypted, but with event forwarding it is encrypted with Kerberos. So you do have a level of security there. If you needed an extra layer of encryption, you could use HTTPS with the certificate. Also, you could change the default port number if you'd like. Normally, the default's going to work. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Click OK again. And that's it. Our event subscription is all set up. Now, we'll take a little bit of time for the events to go into the forwarded events event log. So you do have to be patient, and if you specified a period that goes pretty far back, it may take even longer to catch up to get up to real time, and then once it does, you'll start only seeing new events. And a little time has passed, and there we see our events. So they're successfully being forwarded over. If I go over here, you can see this is from desktop 101 from the system log. And this one's from desktop 102. So event forwarding is working and it's from the application log. And you can see we're only getting what we specified, which was warning and errors and critical.